What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are going to be going through how to set up and use your Wagner paint sprayer. So first, we are going to find a piece and get it all cleaned up, and you're going to want to use some sort of degreaser. Me personally, I like to use my natural degreaser formula, which is just vinegar and water. And I start by wiping that on there and getting it nice and clean and then I actually go on there a second time with just water. So a wet cloth just with water just to get all of that vinegar and residue off to make sure that it's really clean. And the reason why we do this before we sand is just to make sure that none of the grime and the grease that's on the surface of the wood gets into the wood and causes stains or, you know, seepage like that just to make sure it's as clean and pristine as possible. Another reason we start off by cleaning our piece is just to make sure that our paint has the best possible chance of adhering to the piece as well as possible. So we wanna get all that dust and grime and all that stuff off of there so that our paint isn't sticking to that specifically, but actually sticking straight onto the wood. And this will make sure that our paint lasts as long as it possibly can instead of flaking off or coming off with the dust and all that good stuff. There was some damage to the top of this piece, as you can see here, and I had to go in there and spend most of my sanding time trying to get that top layer of finish off where most of the scratches were. So I spent most of my time on that and then moved on to just scuff sanding the rest of the piece. So with scuff sanding, the reason why we do this is just to add a little bit more grip so that the paint has something to grip onto instead of having that slick surface. And you want to make any repairs that you do before you start painting. So any, you know, uh, things that you have to fill, any holes from old hardware that you have to fill, any holes that you're making for new hardware, you want to do all of that before you start painting. And now we are cleaning it for the second time before we start. And I like to go in there with a shop vac first just to get all the big chunks of dust off. And then I go in with just water and a clean rag and wipe all of the excess. Okay, so you have two parts, right? You have this guy, and then you actually have like the Wagner big boy right here. So first, we're gonna take our paint cup and we're gonna put the paint in it. So get the paint of your choosing. I'm using one by Melange paint in the color Jet. And if you guys haven't checked out my paint review of this paint, make sure to go check it out. It is a really, really good paint and I'm extremely happy with the way that it goes on, the way that it finishes. Everything about it is just really, really good. So check that out there. And uh, when you're putting paint in, you can either mix it with water if it's water-based or mix it with mineral spirits if it's oil-based just to uh, make it a little bit thinner and easier for the paint sprayer to you know push it out and um, but with this paint I already watered down the stuff that was in this jar here in the first jar so it should be good and only need just like a tiny little dash Start with less and then add more as you go because you can always add more water. You can never take it away. So I would say that this is about the right thickness. You want it to be like thin enough to, you know, be liquidy and yeah. For setup, 
you're gonna grab this guy here, you're gonna make sure that the nozzle, unless you're working like up here, you might wanna rotate the nozzle to point the other way if you're spraying in an upwards direction. But if you're gonna be spraying down like for furniture pieces, you're gonna want it to go, of course, downwards so it can grab the paint. And you're gonna screw that on so it's secure. And then we're going to attach it to this piece. And so as you can see here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's these two little like latches at the top and at the bottom in there. And so you're gonna kind of plan for those and you're gonna latch it in till it, so you don't want it to be like out here. You want it to make sure that it goes all the way in first and then twist it. And this little latch will click into place like that. And uh, that is pretty much the setup. That's, we're pretty much good to go from here on out. So comes with a pretty short wire. So you're gonna need an extension cord for this guy. Uh, but once you plug it in, it's pretty self-explanatory. This right here adjusts how, you know, how high your, your air is. So air power, it's the air power nozzle. So the more you go here, the stronger the air is gonna be pushing out of the paint sprayer. And the lower you go, the more gentle it's gonna be. So I prefer to go somewhere in the middle. That way, when you're doing it, it doesn't, it tends, when you're doing it on full power, I get a lot more drips. So when you're doing it at like, you know, six or so, or maybe even seven, I tend to get less drips and it doesn't push the paint around as much. Um, so yeah, I personally prefer it to be on six or seven. You're gonna want to wear a respirator because the, pay, the place that you're going to be spraying in is definitely probably gonna be indoors because if you do it outdoors, you're dealing with wind, you're dealing with dust, you're dealing with all sorts of stuff. So I prefer to do it inside. So you're definitely gonna wanna wear a respirator for that because there's gonna be a lot of paint, a lot of fumes in the air. So protect those lungs of yours. And when you spray, you're gonna use this trigger here. So you're gonna press this little uh, button down and that's gonna start the motor of this baby here. And then when this is down, you're gonna start spraying by pulling this and that will get your paint flowing. Make sure you practice on like a piece of cardboard or a wall or whatever you wanna practice on first, just to make sure it's the way that you want it to be. So when you're spraying, you don't wanna go like this because when you go out here, it's gonna end up, say I'm hitting the furniture right here it's gonna end up having less paint on the two sides than in the middle. So it's gonna be thin, 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 thick, thin, 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 thin. So you're gonna wanna go keep the same distance from the piece all the way through. And make sure you're overlapping just a little bit on your lines, right? So just like that, okay? And uh, yeah, let's get started. Something you should also know is the positioning of the nozzle, the blue part that's shown in this picture. So if you're going side to side as I'm going now, then you're gonna want your nozzle to be turned horizontally like it is shown in the picture. To me, that seems kind of counterintuitive. I don't know why, but to me, it doesn't make sense how it going horizontally sprays horizontally. But um, again, I don't really know how a paint sprayer works, so it probably makes total sense, but I just don't, uh, no, the specifics. But anyways, if you want to spray up and down, you will want the uh, nozzle to be turned vertically like shown in the picture here. 
And um, it also has a setting where if you turn it diagonally like this, it actually sprays like perfectly circular. Um, this is for more detailed and uh, specific, you know, places. Uh, if you really have somewhere that you want to get like an even coat with a circular um, shape, that's the way to do that. Uh, but yeah, the positioning of your nozzle is very important and you will see me using the vertical setting in a little bit here when I go to get the middle um, drawer dividers and the trim along the sides of both of the dresser. In the beginning, it was a little confusing for me to remember which one was which, but then I just realized that vertical is you know, for vertical items and horizontal is for horizontal items. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just don't think about it or maybe do if it makes sense to you. Uh, yeah, it, it just didn't for me, but you know, whatever. <laughs> For drawers, I like spacing them out this way. That way I'm not wasting any of the paint on the sides of the drawers and I can just spread right on over to the other drawer and get as much coverage as I possibly can without getting any like overspray that I end up wasting in the end. So this is what it looks like when you run out of paint. As you can see, it starts to get really splotchy and the paint kind of becomes unpredictable and inconsistent. And this is a super easy fix. You just take off the canister and make sure you put your paint sprayer over something. I'm just putting it over my tarp. That way your paint doesn't get on the floor or anything that you don't want it to get on. And then you just refill your paint canister and then you're good to go. It comes out magically from the other side, once again, creating a perfect finish. And when everything is all done, you're gonna unscrew this guy. It can kind of be a little difficult to screw off simply because a sprayer adds a lot of pressure because it's literally sucking out air. So it can kind of be like, you know, hard to get off sometimes. I'm gonna try to make sure that you've got, you know, the majority of the paint out of the straw. At least I like to do that. And you wanna take this guy, then you wanna unscrew this guy and the way you do that, push this part down here and that'll automatically get it to twist and it just pops right off, just like that. So you're gonna put this aside. For now, don't put it away, but put it just aside. So if there's paint in here still, you can go ahead and dump the rest of the paint into the old jar save that for later and then we're gonna rinse everything out so you want to get this as paint free as you possibly can all right so this is how you want it to look afterwards I mean of course you can try to get the paint on the outside off but I mean it's gonna get more so it doesn't really matter but it has no paint inside of it. And once you got that going, you're gonna make sure that this is completely rinsed, that the straw. And at the bottom of this guy, rinsed out as much as possible. Then we're gonna put some water into here. Screw it on. And we're gonna 
and get this guy back. We're gonna put her on, lock it in place, and then we're just gonna spray. You're want, gonna wanna spray either you know, into a sink or whatever vessel can hold a lot of water, because this is gonna clear out any of the paint that's still in the tubes here, and uh, you're just gonna want somewhere for that paint to go. So turn it on. When spraying out the water, they suggest to shake the paint sprayer just to make sure that you're agitating any paint that would be left over in the nozzle or any of the little bits there. So make sure you're just shaking it good and letting all that water come out just to double and triple check that all of your paint is out. And once you do that, it is a good idea to take off all the little bits and pieces just to make sure that there's no leftover paint sitting there because the more you avoid buildup, the more you will have a healthy and working paint sprayer. So I got these little plastic doodads, uh, you know, halfway through the process, of course, but I would highly recommend getting them because it just makes sure that you can get all of the parts of your legs and all that sort of stuff with the paint. And uh, yeah, just get full coverage. And whilst we are getting full coverage, I am going in there with a top coat polyurethane that has a little bit of the black mixed into it and uh, letting that dry. And while that dried, I went in to spray paint my hardware just so it matched the other hardware that I got for it. And here is the finished product. The coat is so soft and smooth, and I bet if you went in there with a, uh, you know, sanding block in between coats, it would be that much smoother. I didn't find it too necessary since I knew that the wood grain would be showing through the paint anyways, but here is the final product. I honestly cannot recommend getting a paint sprayer enough. It is so quick and so easy and makes painting a piece go by so fast. <laughs> and yeah, the time spent with a paintbrush is time lost. So it just speeds up the process and makes earning money that much faster. Anyways guys, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys want me to do more tutorials like this, please let me know. I will be happy to do so. And I hope you guys stay tuned for the next video. All right guys, stay flippin'. Mwah. <laughs>